Eleven years ago, <laughs> I went to work as a volunteer in Sri Lanka for eight months for a couple who were based there called Narissa and David. In 2005, just after the tsunami that had devastated much of Sri Lanka and Indonesia, Narissa came to my school to try and raise money for the Rahana Special School. The Rahana Special School was a school for children who were deaf, blind, or had learning difficulties and had been badly affected by the tsunami. I got involved in raising funds, and six months later, after saving up a bit of money, I went out to Sri Lanka to work for them. They were based in a small village called Madiha near Matara, on the southernmost point of Sri Lanka, which had been particularly badly hit. I'm going to talk about two projects I became involved with whilst I was out there. Narissa and David have been raising money to support the Rohana School for some time and have rebuilt many of the classrooms and dormitories for the students. When I arrived, I began to hold drawing classes with the children in the afternoons. The kids were aged between 5 and 21 and were blind, deaf or had learning difficulties. I used to hold the drawing classes outside onto the canopy in the middle of the garden. We would all sit in a circle and they would take turns posing for each other. It was great to be working with the students on something together and to learn how to communicate with each other through sign and drawing. Growing up in Sri Lanka, they had learned to draw differently from me, and it was interesting to see how we had different cultural references. Sometimes they would draw the profile of the model, even though they were sitting face on, with lots of eyeliner and a parrot or a palm tree in the background. At the same time, I became involved in helping Narissa with another project she had just started. Many of the coastal schools in, Mart in the Matara area had received large amounts of funding after the tsunami, but that hadn't reached the poorer rural schools just a kilometre inland. Many of these children's children could not afford to have breakfast in the morning and so would turn up to school hungry. Often there were cases of children fainting in assembly. <coughs> Starting with one school, Narissa began to raise money to set up a breakfast bun delivery service to provide free breakfasts for all the children in the school. The breakfast needed to be something that was easy to distribute and didn't require any kind of dish or utensil, so we started to work with fish buns, a very popular snack in Sri Lanka. We began to investigate local bakers who would make the buns and tuk-tuk or taxi drivers to deliver them daily to the school prior to the first lesson. From the week the buns were int introduced, school attendance jumped up by more than 20%. Narissa was soon approached by other schools, and as she raised more money, we began to expand the breakfast bun program. Working for her, I visited and surveyed 25 rural schools within the Matura area, interviewing the headmasters and speaking to the teachers and assessing what conditions they are in. Gradually, more schools were able to join the program, and as I left to go back to the UK, there were almost 26 schools and nearly 5,000 children receiving a bun every morning. And Narissa was trying to secure long-term investment from the World Health Organization. It was a real privilege to be able to work for them and fantastic to see how a project could be set up and to be involved in helping to develop it. And I like that a lot about the Semble's work, the first-hand nature of some of our projects and the chance to meet many different people along the way. <laughs>